Welcome to Clear Play, powered by Typical Sportsbook. I'm your host, Tony Anderson, and today we are talking all things NASCAR and the Coca-Cola 600. Joining me is editor at For The Win, Michelle Martinelli. Michelle, how are you? I'm well. I'm excited to be here. How are you, Tony? I am excellent, ready to get into this NASCAR situation. So talk to me about the keys to betting NASCAR. So there's 36 races throughout the season from February to November. And if you're trying to bet on NASCAR, I would recommend looking at specific tracks rather than larger season trends. The Coca-Cola 600 is the next race coming up at Charlotte Motor Speedway. If I were to bet on that race, I would want to look at how drivers performed in this race last year. Who was running up front last year? Who runs up front consistently? How many times have certain drivers won? How many times have certain drivers almost won? Those are things that can have an impact a little bit on maybe where you place your bet, but it's not a foolproof plan because there's chaos in NASCAR and you never know if maybe the driver you bet on gets involved in something that was not his fault. He just gets collected as collateral damage and then his race is over and you've lost your bet. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a little bit of a fickle thing, um, but the best thing I can say is to look at, look at who performs well at that track. Look at what teams do well or consistently do well, and then start to make an educated guess from there. So Michelle, talk to me about how important the teams are surrounding the actual driver. They're so important. It's NASCAR seems like on the surface, like it's an individual sport. And this is applicable across motorsports, right? The driver is the face of can be the face of the sport, can be the face of the team. And, and so they're obviously naturally in the spotlight, but it is 100% a team sport. And pit crews and engineers work so hard throughout the week and throughout the year just to try and make each individual race work well for their team. And something as small as, you know, a, a slower pit stop than you might normally have. If your pit stops are normally, so let's say, 12 to 13 seconds and you are more in the 13 to 14 second range that could be the huge difference between where you come off pit road you could come off pit road in the top five if you have a really good pit stop or you could come off way behind the pack and it takes everybody firing on all cylinders to make it work so michelle now let's talk in race betting we actually get a chance to listen to what's being said between pit crews and drivers What's something that you're listening to that could give you a good indication as to whether this driver is going to have success or failure? Listen to and look at the beginning stage and see how everyone's performing in the first stage of the race. If some driver is on the radio constantly complaining about how their car feels, it's too loose, it's too tight, they aren't able to, to drive it into the corners the way they want to, if they have concerns like that, those are those are notable. Those are things that can be fixed on pit road, which is why like I wouldn't rush to make a bet right away at the beginning of a race because they might be able to fix the issue and the driver gets back on track and then and they say the car is great and handling well. And so but if you're in a situation where there's, you know, multiple unscheduled pit stops or a driver is complaining about something, that's not necessarily a good thing. But on the other side of it, if you're watching the race, something I would look for in, in how well someone, what, what their potential is for a race would be where their starting position is and how many cars they're passing and how quickly they're passing those cars. All right, Michelle, you have educated us on NASCAR in general. Now I want to get into some premium picks. So before I get your pick for the Coca-Cola 600, what makes this race such a unique event? So the big one is that it is the longest race on NASCAR schedule, which has caused a lot of discussion because it's a really, really, really long race. Um, the Coca-Cola 600 is as it sounds. It's 600 miles, 400 laps around Charlotte Motor Speedway's 1.5 mile track. And it is, it's always on Memorial Day weekend and it falls on one of the biggest days in motorsports and particularly American motorsports because the Coca-Cola 600 is always run on the same day or generally speaking run on the same day as the Indy 500. So it's a big day in motorsports in general and NASCAR's longest race of the season definitely contributes to that. Michelle, talk to me about the changing conditions throughout the race and how much of an impact that makes on the driver's success. So, I mean, that's a huge one. Um, depending on what time of day the race starts, that's another thing you would want to consider 
when you're making a, a bet in, in NASCAR because um, like with the upcoming race, the Coca-Cola 600, that race is going to start during the day, but it's going to end at night. And that means track conditions are going to be a lot different. You're gonna see changes in how the driver's cars handle the, the track conditions. You're gonna see how it, it, it plays with the grip when there's more grip, when there's less grip. You're gonna see all these different factors come into play purely because of whether or not the sun is out and how hot it is and then the shift in what a difference that makes once the sun goes down and it's night, the track conditions are very different. So Michelle, I'm gonna put you in a hot seat. Who do you believe is gonna win the Coca-Cola 600? And who do you believe is a long shot that could have the best value? I mean, those are loaded questions, right? It goes back to what we were saying. It's very challenging to try and pick a winner for any of these NASCAR races. You can probably pick who's most likely, but it's really hard. So if I had to pick, um, I think I would go with either Chase Elliott or Martin Truex Jr. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. has won three times on Charlotte's 1.5 mile oval. Um, he's won the Coke 600 twice already. On an outside shot, I would look at Daniel Suarez. He, he races for Trackhouse Racing, which has been on the rise significantly this season. And Suarez ra ran really, really well this past weekend at Texas Motor Speedway for the All-Star Race. And so, and that's also a 1.5 mile track. And so while the, the situation is not necessarily comparable because those are very different races and one is an exhibition event, whereas the Coke 600 is obviously something that you race for toward, for points in the, in the season. Um, I, I think it, Suarez would probably be an outside. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. You dropped some serious knowledge on us about NASCAR. Please come back again and make sure you go to Tipico and lock in your bets right now. Hey sports fans, if you want to learn more about sports betting, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget, for tips and analysis, make sure you go to betforthewin.com.